What's up guys, your boy Parkeen Alexander, and today on Auto Nation, I got Mr. Cornelius Shackford. What's going on, bro? Oh, what's going on, brother, man? Great day to be alive. It is, it is, man. It's been an exciting day. You had your first podcast today. Yeah, uh, sir. What's the name of your podcast? Uh, next Up. Uh, what is it going to consist of, bro? Uh, it's, it's a mixture of uh, entrepreneurships and uh, just uh, dropping gems, uh, no, no, um, no particular field in particular, um, you know, catering to young athletes, uh, real estate, uh, you know, just starting businesses in general, just, you know, kind of dropping some jewels and knowledge and just being encouraged into the world and trying to be, uh, trying to be fruitful, trying to, you know, get people uh, what they need in their journey and just, uh, you know, trying to be of service. Right. And who did you have on the first episode today? Uh, today we had Josh Aubrey, man. Uh, uh, Formula uh, NFL player uh, and uh, real estate investor out in the Dallas Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, man, uh, great guy. Was excited to you know uh, have him on. Uh, great content, and I, I felt like that uh, he enjoyed himself, and, uh, and I feel like the audience will definitely get a lot from from Josh. When can uh, where can we watch your uh, podcast? Uh, YouTube. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at uh, at Shack Solid. And, uh, or you can just put my name in, Cornelius Shaga for it. Instagram and Facebook, both at Shaq Solid. So uh, great content. Uh, subscribe to us, follow us, uh, share it, like it. Uh, we would love to have you in the audience. Where are you from, bro? I'm from Tyler, Texas, man. Uh, right outside of Dallas, about an, an hour and a half east. Um, you know, small town, but uh, humble beginnings, man. Uh, just um, a, 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 a kid, you know, being raised by a single mom. Um, you know, two brothers and sisters, uh, just real humble beginnings, man. You right. know, where are you? Uh, are you the oldest, or where do you fall? I'm actually the oldest. Okay. So you know, growing up, you know, <laughs> everybody looking to me. You know, yeah. none of us had a father, so I kind of naturally assumed some of those roles. And um, you know, just being of somebody that was kind of, uh, kind of creating the way uh, in that path. You know, trying to find you know the right things to do the right things not to do i was always being watched and that was something that you know i didn't take lightly it was a responsibility that you know, i i i actually kind of grew fond of okay uh out here in Tyler, there's uh red red nation and cujo which one did you go to i actually went to cujo you know okay. john tyler high school uh graduate of 06 uh you know shout out to my 06 guys out there uh and and and, and ladies uh, when I say guys, I mean everybody, but uh, man, uh, graduated 06 and, and, and it really kind of uh, molded me, molded me, you know, the exposure, uh, the things that I was exposed to, uh, the things that, you know, I grew up with, the friends, my environment uh, kind of shaped me and, you know, kind of had some experiences early to where uh, I made some decisions early, uh, what I was going to do, what I wasn't what I was not going to do um, and kind of really uh, became a solid, you know, piece of my foundation. Uh, at, at John Tyler High School, man. Was uh, Coach Allen still there when you were there? No, Coach Allen was just leaving. When I when I was in eighth grade, it was his last year uh, at John Tyler. So okay. I, I kind of came in under Coach Ratcliffe uh, okay. Okay. The, my, my freshman year. So All right, cool, cool, cool. just missed him. Did you have any notable alumni from your class that went on to bigger and better things that you keep in contact with or that you know of? Yeah, absolutely. I um, have a couple guys. Uh, one, Kendall Hunter, he graduated a year behind me, but we played on the same team um, for three years. <laughs> I believe he was on varsity as a, as a sophomore. Um, but um, let's see, who else? Uh, Jeremy Lane uh, played for Seahawks, the cornerback. Uh, he I, I also was a year younger than me. Um, I think that that's pretty much that's, it that ended up, end up right? making it to the league. Um, yeah, Kendall, Kendall. Uh, Kendall actually uh, worked uh, with me on uh, in the oil field, so I, I Oh, yeah. And then uh, Jeremy, Jeremy with the Legion of Boom up there with, right. uh, with all them boys. That, that's that's pretty cool, man. A lot, a lot of talent, uh, talent comes out of John Tyler. Nothing against Robert Lee. It's just, you know, most yeah. of my family's gone to JT over the years. Now, coming out of high school, where, uh, where did you do? Did you go to college? Did you have dreams and aspirations to be in the NFL or? Man, absolutely, man. When I came out, um, we kind of back up a little bit because my dream started early, you know. Okay. Um, I, I was a kid that, you know, wasn't exposed to a lot of things on on the entrepreneur side of things. And so all I seen, you know, um, as a kid, making observations is, 
you know, NFL, you know, being a college ball player and then going on to the NFL, that's how I felt like, you know, I can take care of my family, take care of my mom and, um, you know, be a, a service for her and thank her for all the things that she's done for me. So early on, I developed that that dream of of going to the NFL and, 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 and just taking care of my family. Uh, but not everything goes as planned, as you know, you know, yes. you just live and you learn. And, um, you know, by the time I want to play running back. And uh, even in Pop Warner, I played left guard, offensive line, right. And so uh, it was, it was. I was getting crushed. I was getting crushed early. Was you were you kind of a chubby kid or? I was average size. I was more. I was one of the, the bigger kids, but you know, I wasn't like chubby or anything. I, it was just kids on the team that was flat out faster than me. Uh, matter of fact, Teddy Williams was another guy that graduated with me that I played play with me. He just retired, but his dad was our coach. And Teddy played, you know, running back. Teddy's always been fast, so you know he played running back. So you know, along with a couple other guys, but I just wasn't, you know, the fastest, one of the faster kids. And so I had to play on the line, I had to block for those guys. And so I didn't really start getting my shot to play running back until about seventh grade. And I was literally like the third stream, and then like you know, a couple guys flunked out, and I started. <laughs> right, so I didn't even really, you know, beat those guys out. They kind of took care of themselves, but. It really gave me a taste of what I really wanted to do. And even then, I still wasn't the best. I still wasn't the fastest, the biggest or anything. So I just had to work my way to you know, who I wanted to be. So when I got to high school, I kind of, um, I, I begged my mom to start taking me, you know, during the summer early. And I'm glad I did. And I was persistent with it. And finally, she took me. And um, I got up there, and it was a couple guys working out consistently on a daily basis. And their name was Aaron Ross and Tim Crowder. Both went to the league, and you know, both was committed to University of Texas. And what that allowed me to see was uh, the grind on a whole different level, right? Uh, you know, th these guys were like, you know, going to the places that you want to go to. You know, they was on the right path, and literally day in and day out, they were the only two in the in the, in the weight room. And so, as a kid coming in not knowing anything. Uh, I just start watching them, you know, just behind the scenes. I set up a little set over, a station over here, and I just kind of watched what they did and the way that they work. And when they moved outside, like I just kind of went behind the bleachers and just kind of watched their drills. And um, and that's really where you know the training really helped me because like that's when I realized that I had a photographic memory. You were soaking it all in. I was soaking it in, and then so uh, when I would go home. I remember those drills. I put them here and I go home and I didn't have cones and we and my mom, she didn't know where to get them or whatever. So I just found big rocks and I placed them where I felt like they had them. And uh, I ran the drills that I seen them do every day. So every day I went home and I just imitated and mimicked what they did every day. So now like, you know, going into the training and what I do now for other kids, um, I can, I can remember everything. It kind of prepared me, and it helped me with test taking and a lot of stuff. And I learned that going into my freshman year in college. But I got to see two guys really honor their craft and uh, you know lay a bl blueprint down on really how to get to where they were going. All right, all right, all right. Uh, so you graduated in '06, and then uh, what was your first uh, foray into college? Where did you go? I went to Kilgore College, okay. but it was a, it was a rocky road even going there because like. Um, I was kind of overlooked. Well, it wasn't kind, but I was overlooked, you know, um, when I was graduating. So I was graduating, I didn't have a scholarship anywhere. And so I was getting ready to go into uh, 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 the courier program, carrier program. It's an air conditioning company here in, uh, in Tyler, Texas. And so I was, you know, I had gave up on the sport. I was like, okay, well, I didn't get a scholarship, don't know what to do, so I'm just gonna go get a job because a lot of my buddies had done the same thing. Right. And so my mom, um, you know, there was a couple guys, there was seven of, uh, of the guys um, committed to Kilgore from my graduating class. So it was a lot of them. So a couple of them double committed to D Division One schools and I uh, had to go to Kilgore to graduate first and get their associate degree and then go. So my mom was like, man, it's a whole bunch of you guys going up there, them guys going up there, why don't you just go up there and see if you, know, you can walk on to the team? And I'm like, okay, you know, it was worth a shot, right? And so I go up there, I ride up with those guys, I introduce myself, I you know, do what my mom taught me. You know, my uncles, they always tell you, when you look a man in the eye, shake his hand, and uh, you know, respect things. So I did that, asked him could I uh, walk on, and he said, well, sorry, son, we already have all our walk-ons. And um, I said, okay, thank you, sir. And I got ready to walk off. As I turned to walk away, he's like, hey, Shaq, 
I said, yes, sir. He said, um, tell you what, since you came all this way, uh, go ahead and work out with the guys today. Lift weights with them and we'll do conditioning and then we'll we'll talk afterwards. So I was like, okay, cool, I can do that. Yeah, thank that you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, all I needed was an opportunity and he, and he gave it to me right when I thought that it was it was over. I, like, I just made a trip for nothing. So I go in there and like those guys, they're in there just simple little workout. I'm in there like, hey, this is my life. Like, if, if I don't, you know what I'm saying, impress this guy today, um, I'm not going to college. And so I went in there and I lifted and I was always strong lower body. And so power clean and squat was always my strength. And so we went in there and we happened to do power clean and squat that day. And uh, I impressed him because I was lifting with the linemen were lifting. And so that happened and he was like, I can tell he was, you know, kind of like, okay, kid might be, be all right. And so we go out to the field and we run in sprints, conditioning. In my head, like, I'm finna kill everybody here. Right. Like, you know, like, and that, and that was like my, my gift. I just plumb out felt like nobody could outwork me. And so I got on the line and I took every every rep we did personal. We was running gassers and I took every one personal. So I came off the line, killing the game. I'm talking about like beating people by like 15 yards. And these guys are starters. You know, they're here starting receiver, starting DB, and coaches talking, oh, y'all gonna let Shaq come in here and, and take y'all spot? Like, he ain't even on the team, and he's like out working everybody. And he's trying to stir those guys up. And it didn't matter to me. I'm like, I don't care what they do. I'm not letting anybody win one. Right. Right? So, and I can hear them, you know, whispering amongst each other. You know, they bent over. You know, where I come from at John Tyler, we couldn't bend over. If one person bent over, we start over from one. And so the culture was different from where right, I came right, from. Right. And so they bending over, they're talking, he's like, he don't, he don't know how many we got, right? They like, you know, like, we trying to save some, he ain't gonna have nothing left. And I, I hear him talking, but I'm just like, there's no way nobody's beat me, I don't, I don't care. Like, I have another gear. And literally we ran 15 gases and I didn't lose one. After the team, uh, after after we got done, coach put me to the side, he said, uh, okay, son, you can walk on. So he didn't have a spot, he made a spot for me. And I, I'm gonna be forever grateful for Coach Reeves for taking a chance on me. Um, and let me walk on that day. Okay. Wow, that, uh, shout out to him. Yeah. If, if you wouldn't have had that opportunity, then. Absolutely. Um, now, did you do your full two years at Kilgore College? I did, I did. Um, kind of, you know, kind of took a little um, chance. I mean, I, I, I walked on, I took the starting spot at cornerbacks. So I walked on as a corner. Okay. Took the starting spot at corner and then ended up going head to head with a tight end. He had an out route we were in cover two. Uh, and cover two, you know, cornerbacks have flats. So six foot six tight end, you know, 260 pounds. I was about 177 pounds soaking wet, <laughs> right? So, and I'm coming with everything I got. That's just the only thing I know. So I come and I'm, boom, I get big lick on him. And I mean, he let the ball go and everything. Everybody's like hype, oh, jumping all over me. And literally my arm is like this, right? My shoulder was tore, torn the ligaments in my, uh, my rotator cuff. And like, I'm in excruciating pain. Everybody's jumping on me, you know, trying to congratulate me. And I'm literally like, I can't feel my arm, right? And so right then I had worked my way onto the team, took the starting spot and then boom, you know, sudden change, right? You know, it, it, adversity, adversity, right? It, it, absolutely, it was adversity. And so um, set out the rest, of, the rest of the season, that was before the season even started. So I ended up having a red shirt. <laughs> You know, the year that I felt like I was going, you know, going to be my big year, right. which is my, my first year. So I redshirted, and then we got ready to later in the season. Like I had been sitting, I hadn't practiced nothing, so I got bored. I was like, Coach, you know, let me get my pads back. You know, I just want to practice. He was like, Son, your shoulder's torn. Like you gonna have surgery at the end of the season. Like it's gonna hurt. And I was like, Coach, I'm just bored, right? I just want, I just want to play. So he's like, okay, it's on you. You have surgery anyway. You, you either you're gonna mess it up more, and they got to repair it all. He said, either way, they'll fix it. I was like, okay, cool. So I got my shoulders pads back, helmet. I'm going out there. I'm practicing. I'm just like, man, I just gotta stay out of big, big hits, right? Right. A couple times it happened, you know, arm down, whatever, pain. Let it go by. Wait 10, 15 seconds, and I'm good to go, right? And so we was getting ready to play a big time quarterback, and um, never forget, like he was one of the top guys in the country, and he was just shredding people. And so uh, coach was like, I need somebody to play scout team and be the quarterback. Our defense was really good. We had a lot of division one talent on our defense. So nobody really wanted to do it. So I was like, coach, I'll do it. He's like, you can't do it. You got a torn shoulder. I was like, coach, I can do it. And so he lets me play quarterback. And this guy runs a lot of zone read. 
And so they had a scheme to where the defensive end takes the quarterback, I mean, the, the running back, and the linebacker scrapes for the quarterback. So it leaves me one-on-one -on -one if I pull it. So I ended up, long story short, I ended up scoring like seven times on the starting defense, like in a row. And coach got livid, he's pissed. So he kicked the whole team off the field and uh, made us go eat dinner and come back. And so all the rest of the guys, they was like, you know, Shaq, come on, hey, when we come back, they chill out. I was like, all right, cool. So coach calls me into the office and he's like, hey, if you take it easy on us, we're gonna lose on Saturday and we're not gonna make it to the playoffs. So if you do, do a good job out there, I'll take you out to eat. You're talking to a poor kid, you know, I'm raised by a single mom. I right. out to eat, cool, I'm I'm with it. Right, so right, I right. kill him right, again. Right. <laughs> so I go out there, I score eight touchdowns again. Defense couldn't stop me. Coach kicked the defense off the field. He said offense gonna have to practice for the rest of the day because if we're gonna win, we have to score 77 points. We can't stop anybody. Yeah. Saturday. And this is in this is in practice. This is in practice. Where, and you have a, and you didn't have your surgery yet. No, I haven't had my surgery yet. So I'm doing this all with a torn shoulder. And um, so uh, come Saturday, they played the team and ended up shutting the kid down. They beat them seven to six. They, they, they scored two field goals and the kid didn't get in the end zone. And so, because they had been playing against me the whole the whole week, right. and it turns out I was a little bit more elusive than the kid. So um, had my surgery and then next year came and a coach retired because his wife had got cancer. And um, you know, he was like, I gotta spend more time with my wife and blessing in the skies because then they offered him the athletic director position. So he ended up staying in a, in a bigger role. Right. So he was in charge of hiring the next coaching staff. Next coaching staff comes in and he tells them, hey, if you wanna win football games, you need to put Cornelius Shackford at running back. And he's like, well, he's on my board as a starting corner. He's like, yeah, but if you wanna win football games, you need to put him at running back. Right. And so, um, they moved my position, and you know I was a little upset about it, but you know not not too much. I'm like, you know, coach, I just want to play football, right? I I don't want to move to be on the bench if I'm starting. And he's like, you think I'll move my best corner to running back and not starting? He said, I'm just gonna stay that. He said, I'm not promising you anything, but I said, you ain't gotta promise me anything because I feel like I'm outwork everybody anyway. Okay. So um, long story short, that next season I'm leading the nation in, in rushing after like the third game of the season, and like I'm you talking about like. I didn't even know what that stuff meant. Right. My offensive line coach pulled me to the side and he was like, it was getting ready for a game, uh, getting ready for our pregame meal. And he pulled up you know, on his phone. He was like, what's going on, Mr. Number One Running Back in the Nation? And I'm hitting my headphones. I was like, what? What'd you say? He's like, you're the number one running back in the nation right now. You're leading on all, all across the country. And I was just like blown away. I was like, man, I got caught my mom. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, cause like it was, it was big to me. Cause like just a year prior, I was finna go work at Carrier. I didn't have any scholarships. I didn't have nobody that was even willing to take a look at me. And, and it's good to have a little moxie with that, cause you, you had like a little chip on your shoulder, and you went from one position to not knowing, and then your head coach. Had his own adversity, right? And he got blessed as athletic director, so it was kind of like the silver lining a little bit, right? Um, so that was your second year at Kilgore, mm -hmm. and then uh, Kilgore College is only a two-year institution, absolutely. And did you take your talents to another uh, school? Well, I was going to. That was the plan, but um, my mom ended up getting really sick, and she ended up passing away. My third game. After the third game of, of my sophomore season, I'm sorry to hear that. yeah, it's it's fine. It's been been a while now, but right. you know, it's still it's still you know, looking at my kids. Sometimes I was like, you, know, you didn't get to meet your grandmother, but you know, it still stings. But um, but that that's what happened then, and it kind of shook my whole world. Not kind of, it really it really yeah. it, it shook my whole world. It shook me to the core because like here it is like the reason why I started playing football in the first place has just really just been taken away from me completely. Right. Right. So like I was really doing some soul searching. Um, stayed at home for a little bit. Um, didn't really know how to to move on because my mom was like my world. My mom was like the reason why I was even going to school and trying to make any of this stuff happen, right? And so adversity hit me. And at the at the beginning, I really didn't take it very well, right? And I missed some school. Um, I mean, because it was literally like, and and it made it kind of worse because I was playing in a football game when you know uh, my mom went unresponsive. And matter of fact, it was like 
earlier that day. I had talked to her all night the night the night before. Right. And then earlier that morning, she went unresponsive and nobody told me. So I was kind of upset with my family, but like she, they was like, you know, she would want you to play and we knew that. So we just let you play. Okay. And so when I got done, like they had told my coaches and whatnot. So when I got done with the game, they, my coaches told me like, hey, you need to get ready to go to Dallas. We got to go to Dallas. And like, it was like, it just shook me. I was like, like, what's going on? And so like, it, it really like interrupted everything that was going on with me, right? And so like, I was supposed to go big colleges and then all of a sudden, like my brother and sister were still in high school at John Tyler. And then I had to make a decision, like, do I go on to finish and try to go to a bigger university and try to go to the league or do I help my brother and sister like get situated? Because, you know, I was the oldest. So it wasn't like, you know, I was just going to bat for me. Right. Like they were looking to me like, you know, what now? What do we do now? You know? And, um, you know, we had my grandmother and my aunt, but like, you know, at the time, like we were all having, you know, struggles. That was around, that was when the market crashed. Uh, that was, you know, the recession in 2008. So it was, it was a, a, a big deal for everybody. Yeah, and yeah, like, you yeah. know, nobody was in a, a really good financial position to be able to help us at all. So you know, they did what they could, but like, you know, it, it put me in a position to where I was, that's all I thought about. I'm like, you know, my brother and sister still in, in high school. Like if I be, I feel like I was going to be selfish if I continue my right. journey. So long story short, I can end up going to the oil field and, and uh, kind of creating a way, helped us get a, a apartment and we just, you know, kind of survived and we kind of leaned on each other. So it, it kind of put a pause on my, my football dreams. And uh, so I set out for a few years and then, uh, you know, a couple coaches, you know, stayed at it and they kept contact with me. And um, hope in hopes that I would come back, and one day I was ready to to come back. And I ended up um, calling a few coaches, and all of them was like, you know, send me your transcripts. Uh, we love you to have you. Like, and then and my time Division One was up, so I couldn't go to Oklahoma State or TCU because my time was up. The time never stops once you put your step foot on campus. Uh, so, so it works differently Division One uh, for the people who don't know. Uh, Division Two, you you can you gotta. It's, the rules are a little bit different. So you get 10 semesters to play your four, your four years. And as long as you're not take, enrolled full time, you're not using your eligibility okay. division two. But like once you take a, start taking a class for division one, your time starts and you get five years to play for no matter what. Okay. Unless you have like a hardship or something. Right, 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 right. Which I, I did, but like, you know, it was, it was just tough to kind of do. I was ready to go back. Like right now, I didn't want to. Where did you, this now, where stuff you like end that. up uh, landing? I ended up landing at Texas A&M Kingsville, down in uh, Kingsville, Texas, okay. right outside of Corpus Christi. How was uh, how was that? It was good. It was good, man. Uh, I was blessed to have another opportunity. You know, I had gained a, a lot of weight in the oil field. Yeah, yeah. I got up to about two sixty five. Like, yeah, give you an idea, I'm about two ten right now. So you're talking about another. 55 pounds. Yeah, no, you know, I, I and, don't know how that is eating good. Yeah, like, right. Long, you know, so, so like, it, when I when I showed up, they were thinking, oh man, we finna get the former number one running back in the nation. Like, you know, he's finna show up and we're finna change our program. And I show up 265, <laughs> right? Yeah, and so yeah. like, it was like, it was like, man, like, and I'm like, coach, I'm gonna lose it. You know what I'm saying? Don't worry about it. And I ended up dropping all the way down to, um, I had to do a semester. Um, you had to, um, to be eligible again to play and be in athletics, you have to actually pass 12 hours. So be a full-time student, and then you're eligible for scholarships and all that good stuff. And so I had to, you know, be on my own dime. The first semester I had to work out on my own. You know, I had to push myself, wake up, go around bleachers myself, and, you know, kind of push, get myself, whip myself back into shape. So when camp started, I ended up, I was a 216 when camp started. So I went from 265 to 216, and I was ready. And um, they didn't think that I was gonna make it. So they was just like already making other plans. And so when I showed up 216, it's like, oh man, like we already was thinking something else. And so coach came to me, he's like, hey, uh, I talked to a couple of your other coaches. They tell me you can play anything. And right now we really need you to play linebacker. And I'm like, man, coach, I just wanna play football. Right, right, right. right? I'm just happy to not have on steel toe shoes, steel toe boots, right? I'm happy to not be in the desert right now. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good, I just wanna play football. Like. Linebacker, cool, I got it. And so my junior year, my first year back, I played middle linebacker. Never played linebacker ever before in my life. And I ended up starting that middle linebacker my, my first year back. Running back, running back. Man, it just moved me around. Utility, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Swiss Army knife. Swiss Army knife, right? And so like, I just I just dug in. I, I started doing my homework. I started, you know, I was coachable. 
uh, got in the film room. Like, you know, I play cornerback and I play running back, which is the counterpart part of linebacker. And I'm like, man, I know how running backs think because I was running back. And so I uh, did pretty well, uh, you know, had a good year. And then I went back to uh, running back my senior year. Okay. okay. And then uh, did you, and the whole time you were from Kilgore to uh, uh, a &M Kingsville, did you get your, uh, your education in anything? Yeah, I was um, actually uh, going to, uh, to in the sport and leisure. It's the business side of the sports industry. Yeah, kind of like a sports agent. Right, right. And so, and, or like running, you know, uh, uh, you know, athletic facilities, stuff like that. Right. And so um, uh, I was 18 hours away from graduation and I decided to, either I was going to finish and uh, get an override and do my 18 hours. Cause the last two semesters I did before that was 19 hours and 20 hours. And one semester. And one semester, I overloaded. Playing. Right, while playing sports. And I had two kids, right? So uh, it, it was tough, but it's not impossible. Like, and I say that to, you know, if you, know, you put your mind to it and you want to get it done, you can get it done, right, right, right. right? So I didn't make excuses. I went to the dean and I asked for an override. I said, how, you know, I went to my advisor. They told me like how many hours I needed. I was like, I cannot squeeze it into three semesters. They was like, you could, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. And I said, cool, that's what I want to do. And so I got an override for three semesters in a row. And uh, I was 18 hours away and I had to decide whether I want to go train and try to get ready for the NFL combine or stay there and graduate. And uh, the only reason why I went back in the first place was to play football and try to make it, you know, make my dream come to reality. So uh, it was a no brainer to me. Uh, after I thought about it, talked it over with my family and uh, we just went, you know, we went to a facility and trained, which was back here in Tyler. Shout out to APEC. Uh, you know, had a good time there and learned a lot from them. And, uh, you know, they prepared me as best they could to, to get to the next level. Uh, what years was this uh, that you went to go try to come by? Uh, 2000, let's see, I think 2012. Um, I, I don't regret it. Um, you know, sometimes I think about like, you know, do I want to go back and get my degree? Sometimes I do, but I don't want to lose 30%. I went to a couple different colleges and and uh, I would, they, in order to graduate at their university, I'd have to take 30% uh, of my hours there and I'd lose a lot of credit. So it's, it's, it's been tricky trying to um, get it, but my, I think my aunt called me the other day and she was like, I think I found a way you can do it online and kind of not lose. Navigate. Yeah, kind of, you know, so, so um, you know, it, it's probably in the near future where I go ahead and get my bachelor's in. If I get my bachelor's, I'm, I'm gonna get my master's. I'm just obs obsessive like that. Yeah, no, I keep going. <laughs> right, you know, right. And your PhD or something. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, did you get to attend the combine? Uh, I went to um, a couple of regionals and I did my pro day. So uh, pulled my hamstring. And so it was, you know, even doing training, it was it was tough trying to, you know, um, really nurse my hamstring and uh, still trying to train and be efficient. So it was it was it was rough. Had a couple injuries that kind of really delayed, um, you know, some opportunities. But uh, it, it's a part of the game. Yeah. So it, it ended up, and then on my pro day, I ended up pulling my hamstring again, doing my pro day in front of about 12 NFL scouts. So. Uh, it was kind of like the, the end of it. I got offered, you know, to do some uh, Canadian stuff, but uh, I had switched my daughter's schools like three times in, 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 her, in her first, and she was in first grade. So I was like, you know, it's, but I didn't know anything about Canada. So I was like, ah, it's time to, time to go and hang it up. You know? okay. Yeah, let, you know, pour, um, pour into the kids, so. Right, right, right. Being young and being a father and trying to juggle all these different things, uh, and especially with moving kids, I, I know how that is. Uh, Kind of takes a, a toll on you. Don't, they don't have much ability. You know? Right, right, absolutely. Um, now, leading up to uh, after, after the, everything has been said and done, when did you get the idea to become where you are today with uh, Next Level Heat? Uh, well, it was like kind of embedded into me, you know, like um, it was, it's something I'm passionate about. One is helping, helping the youth. And um, when I was a kid, I just didn't know what to do, right? I didn't have guys like me walking around, you know, trying to help people. So not only did I not know what to do as a kid, but my mom really didn't know how to help me. Right. Right. So like we didn't have the resources to to be able to try to get better and um, you know put myself in a position to win. And so I wanted to be that to kids. I wanted to, you know, I wanted them to be able to have the avenues to be able to learn and then, you know, kind of I have the experiences that I can pass down to them and I can tell them, 
you know, these are the things you, you should do. These are things you should not do. These are the things you should prepare for and be ready for. And this is how you can put yourself ahead. Right. And so, like, I wanted to be that. And like, like I told you, from the time I watched those two guys when I was a freshman, you know, Tim Crowder and Aaron Ross. And so, like, I, I time I watched them guys and I was able to remember that it, it just allowed me to absorb like workouts and be able to recreate them and not only recreate them, add to them right. and, you know, make something completely different, but like as, as beneficial or more. And so, like, I just took it and I was like, I was passionate about it and I was good at it. So I was like, like, let's, let's make, let's take it to the next level. And, and that's what I ended up calling it. So next level. Do you feel that your entrepreneurship is fueled by your passion from, because you had, I mean, not many people would play with a torn rotator cuff. Not many people would continue after the loss of a loved one or a parent. Right. So you faced pretty serious uh, obstacles. Do you, do you think that that is kind of what just jettisons you towards greatness or a financial freedom or whatever it is your goals in in, uh, in your uh, in your business? One hundred percent. Like my passion is is everything really. Like you know, my passion to to you know create for my kids and, and the generation after them. And even the generation before me, you know, I, I I want to, you know, be able to create and to show them that you can still be successful without sports. You can still be successful without having a nine to five and, you know, just taking away and stripping all your creativity away. You can still be creative. You still can have your ideas and you still can go hunt it. And, you know, and it's OK. Right. And so like my, my passion has everything to do with it. And the adversity is something that's going to happen whether I do this or not. Everybody, right? everybody faces adversity. Right. Some people quit. Exactly. And that's it. Some people lay down. But like, here's the thing. <laughs> the waves are going to keep coming. Yep. Right. It's just like if I'm at the beach and I get knocked down by a wave. I, if I quit right there, I'm going to drown. Yeah. Because the I waves know. are going to keep coming. Right. Something you can't you can't change the weather. You can't you, know? you can't. So like you know, I, I I can control what I can control. Yourself. And and, and that, that's it. So like I, I know the one thing I can control is me. I know the one thing that I can control is my mind and my mindset and, and the way that I structure my day, right? That's the one thing that I have control over. There's a lot of things that I don't have control over and I choose not to focus on those things. So the adversity is adversity. Okay. Everybody's gonna have it, it's gonna come. Right. It's just like what are you gonna do? after it comes. Yeah. Like, are you gonna wait down? I'm not prepared, you yeah. know? Well, are, you, are you gonna lay down and wait for the next wave? Yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna get my ass up. That's what I'm saying. I'm so, drown, so, so, you know what I'm saying? You, either you gonna get up or you gonna drown. Yeah. I don't wanna drown. That's the only decision I've made. I don't wanna drown. Like, like if if you really wanna stir the pot with me, you just tell me that I can't do something and, 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 and then you just started something. And like, that's what, you know, like, I don't know if it's ignorance or, or a, ambition. You know, it's a fine line, but yeah, if you tell me like I can't do something, like you just started, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> a war almost, right? Like that's the story on my, my tooth. Like I have a retainer in my mouth on my tooth because my sister told me I couldn't do 15 backflips in a row on the trampoline. You told me the story. It, it, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, and, and, and crazy thing is like, I had done it already. I'd done it the day before on a Sunday when I didn't really do nothing but go to church. Now on a Monday I had football practice and you know, I don't know the limitations of the body at that point because you know I hadn't hadn't went through enough. I hadn't lived right. long enough to to know anything. But all, what I did know is I've done it, and she said I couldn't. That's the only thing that I needed to know. I'm like, well, we got a, we got a trampoline. Right? Yeah, we got a trampoline in the backyard. We can go do it right now. And so like, I'm I'm take off. You know what I mean? Just got done with football practice, and I'm I'm all or nothing type guy. So even when we had football practice and sprints, I don't lose sprints. I'm going all or nothing. Right, I'm laying it out on the line. Right. And I had just came from that. And um, so I go to the backyard and I just take off flipping. About 10, I knew I was getting dizzy. Around 12, I was like, oh, I don't know. But I just kept going and I passed out in midair on 13. Damn. Plum passed out. <laughs> Ragdoll. Like literally, like boom, come down. My knee goes in my mouth, knocks all my top six loose. Hanging. I wake up in a puddle of blood. My sister and brother crying. I hear a siren going off in my ear. Like, you know, and it wasn't no siren coming. It was just because my ears was ringing. Like, I can barely hear them. And it was like, 
like when you see on TV that yeah, that explosion and yeah. you let it, eh, like literally that's what it was for me. I hear their, I heard their crying, but it was like it was a mile away. You, you didn't and really it, realize what had happened. Right. I didn't, you know. And then I came too. I wasn't crying or nothing, but then I, I kind of stumbled into the house. And crazy thing, it was my grandmother's birthday. <laughs> so my mom had left to go get a birthday cake and bring, and was gonna go surprise my my grandmother who worked at the hospital, ETMC, uh, with a birthday cake. And lo and behold, we surprised her with her grandson with all his teeth hanging out, top six, hanging out. You know, so um, I'm just, I'm just, I have an obsessive personality. Like sometimes, like if I lock in on something, like. I gotta get it done, or and I go to the extreme. Like, no, and, and <laughs> not too many people, because uh, you have a lot of people like um, that say they'll pick up a camera and they're a photographer, but they they don't really know what it all it entails. You know what I mean? Right, right. And then you have some people that even children that you know that oh well, I have a baby on the way, either I'm gonna be in the life or not. You know, we have right. so much of it, especially in our communities that. You know, we have a lot of single parent households, male and female, you right. know, especially, but you know, the way the system's set up, you know, I you know how that goes. Right. You know? But adversity is, is everywhere we go, no matter what. Right. You know what I mean, like sometimes my my hot pockets, I, I, I don't eat every hot pockets anymore because of the oil food, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. It gets, Burnt out on them. Yeah, or maybe noodles. Yeah. But now I, I, I got it. You know, my woman, she she loves ramen noodles and she makes them a little different. Now you got to make a shake then for her. <laughs> uh, now for next level eat, what do you, or do you specialize in just children or do you do uh, solo workouts with adults or is it footwork or is it a little bit of everything? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a little bit of everything, uh, but uh, primary focusing on the youth and athletes in general. So okay. like I train kids anywhere from five all the way to the NFL. And so like, uh, I mean, of course, you know, different times, you know, you want to try to put them with age appropriate stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the the thing about it is like, I'm not afraid to give the kid the information. I'm not, I don't put limits on kids. I, no matter how old they are, like if I train an NFL athlete on footwork and change direction hips, I'll train a five year old on the same thing. You know, of course, of course, he's not going to be as advanced as the, yeah, yeah. the NFL guy. But like, um, I think that we as uh, human beings and parents and coaches, we put limits on kids based on their age. And really, they're just hum they're human sponges. Right. So like they absorb everything and they can recreate everything. Like, like, look at some of these kids that, that's in the spotlight, like YouTube. I mean, it's a kid that just made twenty eight million dollars in a year. And we got people going to work complaining about life. <laughs> <laughs> right looking like clowns right, but right, you know right. what i'm saying but you know like they can learn anything right and so like i just give it to them you know what i mean like I, I i don't put limits on them because that teaches them to limit themselves and my whole purpose of being here on this earth is to put, give back and put into them what wasn't put into me like right. you know i don't put limits on them but and then when you see you know, my sons are five and six. When you see my son's footwork and you see his change of directions and his hand-out coordination, you're like, bro, like how long has he been doing this? I didn't know a, a four and five-year-old, five and six-year-old could do this stuff. And it's because, you know, nobody took the time to actually teach him and show him. You know, I, I think uh, society puts limits on certain things. Right. Um, and if he doesn't fit the norm, then either it gets a whole lot of attention, like the little eight-year-old, mm -hmm. his parents set him up for that. Right. His parents already had a little money. Uh, There's a kid in Texarkana, and at uh, nine years old, he had a thing for chemistry and uh, physics. Right. And at 13, he was the youngest person on the globe, uh, recorded uh, to create nuclear fission in his living room. His parents gave him $8,000, $10,000. Right. Now he's 14. Or about to be 15. Now he's going around all over the world giving. Well, well those are the outliers. You know what I'm saying? Right. Th those are the people who who parents had a little bit of information and they didn't think that there was a limit they can give their kid. Right. And they gave him the information and just seen what he was gonna do with it. Exactly. And and lo and behold, <laughs> he just shocked the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the brain is crazy. Like if you give him the information, he's gonna soak it up. Yeah, if yeah. we if we give him like you know a game. And you know, just say, hey, play snake. They're gonna soak it up, yeah. right? They'll be the best <laughs> snake players in the world. Yeah. But like, you know, what I mean, like, if I give my kid chemistry and give him the tools to be successful, let him watch chemistry videos. Of course, he's gonna build. You planted the seed, right? And you 
have no idea. Exactly. Because a lot of things for me, because my, my son has uh, developmental issues, and I saw the breakthrough with him was the uh, puzzles. Right. Coloring. Mm-hmm. Uh, drawing shapes. Right. You know, not the structured being taught how to think. And... He just he just learns differently. Yeah, exactly. That's it. He just learns differently. It's not that he can't learn, because because you see him excel in certain right. stuff, you know, and, and and it's different from this kid the way he learns. But he excels in this. He might be an engineer. Yeah. He might learn, you know, totally different. And we're trying to teach him in a way that he can't understand. And we want to put a label on him and saying that he has a disability. He just learns differently. We just Everybody. have to figure out the way, what, what he, the way he learns, the ways that he processes information. Okay. Uh, you have, you're speaking on your two boys. Right. You have four total. Yes. Two boys, two girls. Oh, so you, are you, are you good? You, 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 do you have any more chitlins in the future? Listen, man, I, I, I'm good. I'm satisfied, <laughs> but I'm not the boss. Right, So, right, right. so, you, so you, look, you. you're asking the wrong one. I just, I just look like the boss. I'm really right. not the boss. Uh, your oldest is a young lady. Uh, she's, she's 12. 12. So you have a preteen or a teenager, really. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, how, how, do y'all have a, a real good uh, bond connection? Yeah. She's like. Yeah, that's my dad. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. I mean, we have a lot of fun. We goof around and we, we make up dances and, you know, and just just goofing off and stuff, you know, just having fun. And like, it's crazy because she's changed completely in the last year. Like she went from like being super shy, not wanting to do, you know, stuff in front of people wow. to like, you know, overcome adversity. Like I, I she went to, she did her first musical. She's playing the, the clarinet. Wow. And um, I mean, she's like, she always like has like these these panic attacks when she's in front of a lot of people. Oh. So like, it was finicky, I'm talking about like five minutes before start time, she has a panic attack. She gets up and then she just walks, and I think, I'm like, oh, she gotta go to the bathroom. And turns out she was having a panic attack. So I see her coming down and like me and her mom go to meet her and she was like sweating. And I was like, okay, so we walk her outside and like her grandparents come out and we're just talking her through it. And, and she's like, okay, I'm cool now. And like, for her to, you know, overcome that and literally go back, she was like, I'm embarrassed. She's like, you know, everybody just see me do that, and I was uh, like, right, you know, we just talked talked about. It. I was like, hey, that's, that's fine. Like everybody in that crowd had this at some point, right? right? If they were brave enough to step out on light and put themselves in this situation, so like, don't take it as you know, embarrassed. Like, man, I'm going back. I'm gonna conquer this. Right, right, and I just told, her, I said, like, hey, we came to dominate, and she gave me high five, and she went back, and she you know killed it, right? And so that was like a big moment for me with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like her mom and like everybody that, that was there to enjoy that moment, that you was watched he her, You watched her grow. Right. I, I watched her grow into, you know, somebody who can handle adversity and come out the other side such of such it. Such a young Man, that, that was that was huge. I, I that was I, I've I've been proud of her a lot of times, but like probably never more proud of her than that right there. Cause because that yeah, man, overcoming adversity and just, you know, overcoming getting out of your own way and yeah. like, you know, overcoming who you think you are and who you really can be. It's so powerful. Yes. And so I was like super excited for her. Like she went up there and like she was, we had a lot of fun, went out to eat and just talked about it. And I was just like, babe, that was huge. Something that maybe like 20 some years I remember when I was throwing up and now right. she's like the CEO or some company. Right. I mean, it was, it was huge because like I put her in a modeling, um, um, you know, little modeling thing, you know, agency or whatnot. They teach her how to be a, a model and an actress and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, she got, she went down the runway for the first time and she had that panic attack and she was just like, it's something Done. that she's kind of had. Right. So like she, and, and like in, in, the, in the modeling agency, they don't want the parents in there, you know? So, no. so it was like literally just her. So she didn't have, you know, she couldn't run to us and, you know, talk to us or whatnot. So it was really like, she was just done for the day, right? She clocked out. And like, so that was like her see, seeing her in that moment right. and seeing her overcome it, man, it was just like, it was just like such an amazing, moment. it was an amazing feeling, man. It was just like, it's like, bro, like, yeah, like that's yeah. big. Like, man, I'm so proud of you. Like I was just, just embraced her and just tell her like, man, that that was, that was big. It was you're, huge. You're 31. I'm 31. Right? So, and she's 12. She's 12. So you'll have a, you'll be what, 37 when she's 18? Yeah. Yeah, like crazy. me, because I have a 14-year-old, and I'm yeah. 33, so I'll, I'll be 37. It's crazy. And, so, and, and it's like, I didn't think I would have a, a grown daughter, right. a, a grown kid, you know what I mean? And 
And it's just weird because it's like, I remember, because I was 18 and I had uh, twins. Right. And one of them passed, so oh, I, faced Sorry, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, I faced adversity, you know what I mean? Right. But seeing a part of you, yeah. you know what I'm saying, grow Absolutely. up, you're like, you know, yeah, that's me. Like, oh, is man. she athletic or is that more of your boys? That's that's one of my boys. Like, right, you know, right, she okay. she was more like, I mean, she artist. yeah, she's an artist. Like, right. she she's like into design stuff. So like, so like, she gets stuff like these little creative games, like okay. Minecraft and stuff. Okay, and she okay. builds like oh, whole cities, and, that, that, and you know, right, right. and so like, she's like more into the creative thing, and like, she does the painting and the the graphic design and. You know, she's like, you know, more into like interior design stuff. Like, so she's like, has a creative mind. Yeah. Um, I wanted her to kind of get into sports, but it just wasn't her thing. And you know, it, it's okay. You know, I, I just wanted her to kind of like run track or something, you know, just cause I knew that that's instant adversity, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I read- Sports can teach you. Bruh. Uh, I, I think, uh, was it Bo Jackson? Bo Jackson was a player that played baseball and football. Right. But I think it was one that said that like, I think he had a nephew. Uh, I think it was, I, I, don't quote me on this, but people that play sports that pick up the clarinet or a musical instrument, mm -hmm. it unlocks uh, different things in your brain and yeah. vice versa. Yeah. Whereas like you have a running back, uh, I think it was Walter Payton, uh, he was doing the ballet classes. Right. And uh, uh, T.Y. from Lee, I don't know if you know T.Y., yeah, he, he was doing uh, gymnastics. Yeah. Get his balance Absolutely. Good. I mean, I mean, you just gotta work different muscle groups, and mm -hmm. and ju it just it just works different muscle groups, but it works different parts of your brain. Yeah. Right. And so. Them all far and all yeah. Soon. So you you just gotta. I mean, because if you don't use it, you lose it. Right. Right. So right. You know, accessing another part of your brain is just big time. You're but strengthening. Yeah. But 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 sports, in my opinion, like I don't I don't really necessarily care if my kids go to the league or the NFL or the Olympics or anything like that. I just know that you know uh, sports is just instant adversity, you know, and you got to have a short term memory to, you know what I'm saying, even yeah. exist in that world, you right? Can't dwell in it. Yeah, like, you know, in my opinion, like athletes are some of the smartest human beings on earth. You know, like yeah. you, you talk about, like people look at the physical nature of them and that's yeah, what they go. All mostly mental. Yeah, they, they, go, they, go, they go off of, you know, oh man, he's the biggest, he's the fastest. But like, you talking about like, just give you a, a, a quarterback for instance. Like, and I'm not only gonna do a quarterback because everybody thinks that they're the smartest. Let me give you like a linebacker. Right, linebacker, you have to actually be able to diagnose a play. Yeah. You have to you have to look diagnose the formation. They come out, the offense get come out. You have to line up your whole you know ten of the guys, in in five seconds, <laughs> and and get the get them lined up. The play starts. You see a snapshot of what's going on. In a half a second, the play looks completely different. Right. You have to actually move, tell your body what to do. You have to think based on what you see. And then you have to, you know, move based on what's going on over here and what's going on over yeah, here. All, all this. this and then, like, and you take a couple steps, and it's, you take another snapshot, and it's completely different. You have to analyze that, and then figure out what to do, what angle to take. If if he's doing his job, right, right, right. I have to trust him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And do my job. I mean, just it just rapid fire mentally. Yeah. Everybody thinks about the physical part. It's rapid fire mentally, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you have to diagnose stuff, re-diagnose it every half a second. And your brain is constantly firing, 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 what to do, what not to do. Don't take this step. If I cross over, I can't get back to it. I'm beat. Get my hands on him. Look at the quarterback. See if it still looks the same. Is the running back leaving? Or did he stay? Did he stay in and block or did he go out for a route? Bruh, you have to be some of the smartest individuals on, on the planet. So. Break so, down a lot of information right. Very so, quickly. so despite what people really think about athletes, like they're very intelligent people, yeah. and so you know, so that's why I want kids to know, like, don't just put all your eggs in being athletic. Try so many different things. Right. You can you can do a lot, man. Like if you can go out there and, and play ball, and you can get out there and diagnose, you can go study the game and go put it into you know real life, and you can go out there and perform at a high level. And, and train your body while training your mind, killing yourself, pushing yourself to new limits mentally and physically every day. Why can't you be, you know what I'm saying, the, the CEO of a company? Why can't you start your own brand and grow and, and have massive following and then go out and be the biggest real estate agent in the world? You know what I'm saying? Why can't you be president? Like, I don't want people, I want, I want these kids and that's what I want to bring to my, 
yeah, I want that's what I bring to the next level. And I want them to know that they're so much more than an athlete. Right, right now, they know they don't know it yet and they don't have the information. Make them believe in the subconscious right. minds that they're I try to create know. the environment that I know I didn't have. Right. right? I didn't have that I had to get older to start putting myself around people who are you know what I'm saying, entrepreneur thinking. Right. And like, you know, they just you had the information to tell me like, hey, football is not it for you. Like you have a magnet, you have a magnetizing, you know, personality. People are naturally drawn to you. Like when you speak, people listen. Like I didn't start learning that stuff till I was older. People didn't, I didn't start getting around people who had, you know what I'm saying, the ability to evaluate me other than a kid from the hood that can, that can throw and run a ball. I didn't have the right environment. So I try to be that environment. And then the more kids I affect at a young age, I take an eight-year-old and I put this type of knowledge in an eight-year-old, he go tell two of his friends, they go tell two of their friends. And then all of a sudden you have a whole school that thinks differently. Right. And they're like, man, I don't have to go to the league and play basketball because it's, it's few and far between. Like, I, I can start my own brand on YouTube. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can, you know what I mean? Little eight year old making Right, you know what I'm saying? You, I just want them to start thinking, right? I don't really want to, you know, push them into one one area or another. I just want them to start thinking to, to expand their mind to, you know, being something more than an athlete. Because when I was growing up, that was all there is. It was athlete or nothing. My grandmother used to ask me every time she see me, like, what if that doesn't work? What's your plan B? I'm like, Granny, it's going to work. Like you, flat out. You didn't know about uh, playing B. Right? I didn't know. That's like it's like you can be a nurse, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer, all the you know generic stuff, right? right but right. you know, I didn't know any doctors or lawyers. <laughs> you only saw the, the street hustlers. I'm and, and I'm, the I'm, I'm listening to them tell me about all this stuff that you know what I'm saying. We don't know anybody of you. Know, you can't take me to a lawyer's house. You can't take me to a doctor's house. You can take me to see a doctor, but you can't go put me in that environment and let me learn from a doctor. Right, right. Right? So like, you know, for you to tell me like, hey, go be a doctor or a lawyer, it was like, it was unreal to me. It was like, you know, it wasn't something that I felt like was even reasonable or possible. Right. Because I was not around any of them. And all I seen was drug dealers and big rims, candy paint jobs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, that was the life. Yeah, no, no, that was the life. The people that was balling, <laughs> had big rims and old school cars, right. box 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 uh, Chevys. You know what I'm saying? Like that was that was balling to me. So that was like my snapshot of success. Right. So like you know, and 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 like 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 in the end. But but seriously, like that that was like that was my reality. So like you know, so I couldn't I couldn't get behind that. So you know what I'm saying? I couldn't get behind my my grandmother saying, hey, lawyer, doctor. You know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't get behind that because I couldn't, I couldn't, know anybody. I couldn't touch that. Um, speaking of doctors, you got this whole other little thing going on right now. I need to need to lose some weight, man. You got uh, a juicing uh, bar that you're doing. Absolutely. Called, it's called Caribbean Wave, correct? Yes, sir. Caribbean and, Wave uh, Juice when, Bar. When did this happen? When did that little gem just drop out of the sky? You're like, you know man, what? it's 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 crazy because like I'm like I told you, I have a real obsessive personality. And like, once I latch on to something yeah. and I love it and I feel like it's really gonna be good for people and beneficial to people, uh, I turn it into a business. Uh, and it just kind of happens, right? So I started juicing and I was like, man, I heard about all these great benefits from juicing and um, you know how beneficial it was for the longevity of your life and aging and, and whatnot. And I, I want to be around for a long time. I want right. to be around for my kids, my grandkids, and hopefully you know be able to at least get a glimpse at my great grandkids, right? right, right, right. And uh, so, I start juicing and I was like, man, this is awesome. And I'm thinking, man, it's probably gonna be disgusting. Like, <laughs> like I've never done this before. It's probably gonna be trash, right? And so I start like, you know, thinking about some good combinations and I start just putting stuff together. Um, me, I'm just all about action. You know, if I say I'm gonna do it, I'm just gonna go, go yeah. take my shot. If it's if it's nasty, it's nasty. Did you start at the house and just with a juicer? Yeah, or? I did. I, I went out and bought me a juicer. Um, made that investment and I started juicing and I started liking it and I was like, man, this is actually pretty good. It's actually pretty tasty. And I started looking up all the benefits and and um, I was like, man, this could be, everybody should be juicing. <laughs> right? And so like, and then I you know, came across juice cleanses and I was looking it up and I started researching it and I got obsessed with it. And one day I was like, man, I'm gonna create my own cleanse. I'm gonna do a three day cleanse. So I was like, cool. So I made up like, I made up four or five different flavors and I was like, man, there's different benefits to go to this. I started Googling all the benefits right. for every one that I was making. And um, I started finding myself getting obsessed with it. And I was like, man, this is probably beneficial to a lot of people. A lot of people 
probably going to lose weight. So I was like, oh, I'll try that on myself real quick. So I did a three-day cleanse. I lost eight pounds in three days. And man, it was just took off from there. I was just like, boom, that's it. Like eight and pounds. Energy in, was better. Energy was better, man. I, I, was... I literally felt better every day. Like it usually be like a high, high, and then you get to a, a low, low, you know, right, right, right. man, like, you know, get done eating and you just be like, ah, oh, man. But I never was hitting that. And I was like, man, I think I've unlocked something. And so like, I was like, man, I got to share this. I got to get this to the world. Like, man, like, and I, and I had a buddy that was doing juicing. I mean, that, that he was doing juicing and he had a little juice bar. And so, and I remember, you know, you know, talk to him about it briefly. And so I called him, I was like, hey, I'm thinking about starting a juice bar. You got some tips for me. He's like, bro, you should absolutely do it. Like, man, then he started telling me a little bit about, you know, what was going on in his world. And I was like, man, like, and I just reached out to him and I just wanted to, you know, get some jewels from him. I always reach out to somebody who's in that space, right? Right, right, right? You know, so like once I figured out I wanted to be serious about it, I knew I had to find a mentor in the space. So I called my boy, uh, JD Perkins. Shout out to JD uh, out there at uh, Fit Juice Beaumont. So I reached out to my boy, JD, and um, we just kind of rapped about it and started talking about the, the different steps that I need to take to actually get this thing rolling, man. And so uh, it's been it's been great. Been doing a lot of cleanses and um, people have been loving it, been great feedback and great results. And uh, so getting ready to uh, make it a full out, full blown juice bar and uh, have, you know, smoothies, acai bowls, maybe some hot, you know, hot stuff like burritos and, and you know, hot sandwiches and stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, excited about what's coming, man. Um, uh, it, it's it's big. You know, my fiance is loving it and, and we're just having a good time. Got the kids involved. Now they want to juice all the time. You know, daddy, can we juice? So it's just, you know, like passing down stuff like that to my kids. Right. Like Thanks. it's it's huge. It's a huge legacy. So, you know, they, they're they enjoying it and they're like, you know, one to, you know, they, they, that's, I'm passing down great habits, right? Yeah, I mean, I you want to go and eat, because I have kind of bad eating habits with currently just right. my workload, but that's an excuse. Um, I look at uh, uh, Annette Larkins, don't know if you know the name. Mm. She's a 76 year old lady. Uh, she likes 40, she looks like a, Freaking vampire yeah. uh, has barely any wrinkles. Yeah, you can tell she's aged very aggressively. Right, but uh, she started eating uh, organic, like raw beets and stuff, and then right. she started juicing mm -hmm. those vegetables, and that's all she drink or eats. And she don't eat no dairy, no protein. Yeah. and I would like to get to that point. I mean, right, I'm like, like a steak man. But right, I, I think that especially you being uh, a young. Uh, a black male, you know, especially, and then me being, because Mexican, you know, tacos and yeah. the, the, the oh, yeah. My, my and fiance the, Mexican, so, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with it. I know, I know your you struggles. Know I mean? And, and I, I think, uh, I'm not saying that there's going to be a taco infused uh, uh, juice, but when you see people in certain uh, areas of life, it resonates. And when they see this on your YouTube channel or on mine, right. and yeah, I need it. Even if it affects one person. Absolutely. You, you've won, you know what I mean? But Absolutely. you got your whole family, your fiance. I got other people that I've talked about this to. They're like, juicing, why the F would I want to juice? You know, right. I'm like, well, you're about 300 pounds. You have high cholesterol. You're, uh, uh, yeah. You can't breathe straight. You know what I mean? I think. Well, that was my deal, man. I just didn't want to wait till the doctor told me I needed to start taking care of myself, to right. start taking care of myself. Right, right, so I right. see people, that's, that's you know, being a trainer, I was I, I was in a personal training and I was, you know, doing boot camps for people and stuff like that. But most of the people come to me because they was like, hey, my doctor said, hey, I'm overweight and I'm borderline diabetic, but my cholesterol is too high, you know, and I need to start working out. And or there body be regenerates. Real your problems. body repairs itself. You mm -hmm. just gotta, you are literally what you eat. You Absolutely. have to repair your body. Not necessarily just from what you eat, but what you digest mentally. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, I, I don't know the couple. Uh, there's a, a black couple that owns Minchies. They're yeah. they do the ice cream. Yeah, it'd be dope to see uh, Caribbean uh, wave on uh, with the side. Yeah, you go in and it's you and, and Valerie and blah, 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 you yeah. know and. And I think that would, I, I know, I know, because I just know, because we bought from Tyler. Right. I mean, I, I, I couldn't not see that place not being packed. You man, know what I mean? It's and, the vision, man. I'm, right, I'm, right, right. I'm excited about the future, man, whatever it holds. Uh, I think that uh, it's going to be a big deal here locally, but hopefully, um, you know, so after, you can maybe franchise. Yeah, we can expand, expand and kind of, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking way out there already, but like that's just, you know, you got to be a visionary. You got to have a, yeah. a vision of what, what it could possibly be. 
And then, you know, because if you if you can't see it, then nobody else right, can right, see right. it. And, uh, right. Before we wrap up here, uh, it's December 28th, uh, right. 2019. Do you have like a couple of goals or metrics that you want to hit next year? Like open up your uh, stand or uh, a camp or something? What, right. what can we look forward from you next year? Absolutely. Uh, the juice bar right now is at the forefront of it all. And then uh, uh, getting out there and doing more motivational speaking uh, okay. is, is going to be a big thing that we're going to do this year. Uh, kind of getting out there and uh, being able to really be a service and, and, and kind of tell my story and, and kind of hopefully we can impact uh, uh, more people. Because some people you know, are reached by other people and some people can't be reached by that person, but they may be able to reach by this one. Okay. And so just putting my story out there and, and hoping you know, I can reach some people and hopefully I can reach more of the youth, speaking to more schools and things of that nature uh, is going to be huge going into 2020. Um, thirdly, I uh, want to do some some camps uh, this year. So um, hopefully we can do about three or four camps this year and uh, really help kids get noticed, get seen, uh, at least get on some some big schools radars and, um, you know, and educate uh, parents about the NCAA and the rules and regulations and the things that they need to do. Right. Yeah. So and, and, and that's what that was my deal. My mom just didn't didn't know a lot. So like trying to create that that platform, because the, the the fastest way to impact a child is to impact the parent. Yeah. You know, make sure the parent has the information because the child can't make any decisions. Yeah. And so being able to put them in front of the right people and, and being able to be educated on what to do to help their child uh, get to where they want to go, follow their dreams, get their keep their school paid for for free, uh, all the great things that um, that come with it. Uh, I want to be able to help them do that Dream, in, in, with, yeah. with camps. What, what you're saying is helping the family, uh, the kid, uh, dream. If the, as a parent, give the child an opportunity. Right. And Good. they send them to their camp and they come back, they're a whole different kid. Yeah, and hopefully. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on the moon and I'm going to be living on Mars. Yeah, so hopefully that. And, and like we're going to do a, a big event in early June. Uh, uh, myself and a couple of the guys, former NFL, you know, guys, motivational speakers, a couple of real estate guys. And we're gonna really, you know, do an event that doesn't have anything to do with athletics. So, but it's gonna be young athletes, but we're gonna be literally talking to them about the credit and, you know, just how to prepare yourself and, and the, the bumps in the road and right, adversity right, right, and right, stuff right. like that. And letting them see that there's real things out there, real tangible things that they can attach their dream to other than a basketball or football. And so uh, that's gonna be a huge thing that we're gonna do for East Texas. And uh, we want everybody to be looking out for that. And we're gonna announce it over the next couple of months. Uh, to let everybody prepare and kind of announce the location and lock down some some sponsors and get some some big names behind it. This is going to be something that we want to do every year. So that's going to be a, a, a conference that we're going to do gotcha. uh, for young young athletes, not per se uh, uh, young boys either. Young girls, you know, they have dreams Fair and ambitions right. and everything. And we'll have some female speakers and like you know, just be able to reach out to everybody. We want to really truly make an impact on where we come from, right? You know, so and and, and who knows? It may grow beyond East Texas. So. Uh, we we're excited about it, and you know we can't wait to bring that. Well, I man, I appreciate you coming on, Automation Man. Uh, working, uh, what's your uh, social media? Where can people follow you on a daily basis for the motivational minute, or right uh, when I would reach you for NL uh, E? Next level, e, excuse me. Yeah, so you can find my my training page with Next Level e Elite Athletic Training at Next Level EAT. That's Next Level Eat on uh, Facebook. Uh, same thing on, on Snap. I mean, uh, on Instagram, next level underscore E. And then uh, for me personally, if you want to follow me and get the, the daily motivation uh, on Facebook, it's going to be Shaq Solid. Uh, YouTube, Shaq Solid. Uh, that's S H A C K S O L I D, Shaq Solid. And then uh, for Instagram, it'll be the same. So uh, definitely uh, get the content, like it, share it. Uh, you know, be a blessing to somebody else because uh, we we never know who we're going to impact from a day to day basis. So I appreciate you, bro. Oh yeah, I appreciate you, out, man. man.